right, I just got these leashes out, and the dogs think we are going for a W-A-L-K. But, we are actually, but not yet. All right, I'm going to show you guys, because I've been getting a lot of uh, comments and messages in my inbox about how my dogs stay close to me when we're walking and why they don't pull me down the road. And my Rottweiler, he is... Uh, he's at least 100 pounds, and then my boxer is, I don't know, he's about 80, 85 pounds maybe. But they're both big dogs, I walk them at the same time, and they stay right next to me. I walk one on each side of me. So I'm going to show you the different choices of collars, and talk about leashes too, here. Uh, I'm going to talk about what not to use for training. I don't like to use harnesses. This is a harness. Basically... Um, goes over the dog's neck and back a little bit and then the um, the leash straps to the middle of it and no good in my opinion no good for training so forget about harnesses then you've got big collars this is a big leather collar I actually had their his name printed on engraved in it and it's it, they're cool collars it makes them look bad <laughs> but not good for training also so I don't use those for training here's what I use for training this collar here and I don't remember the name of it but you can find it at pretty much any pet store it has prongs on it as you can see my lighting is terrible I'm sorry about that but it has prongs so when you pull on the leash a little bit it compresses and those prongs they don't pierce the skin or anything like that. They just make the dog a little bit uncomfortable, but the dog listens instantly. And you give a little tug, and then you instantly let go. That's all it takes, is a little tiny tug. And I swear, I've had people, I've trained a lot of dogs for people, and they tell me there's no way that, you're, that my dog is going to walk right next to you. And they've had them for years. And the instant, the second that I put this collar on them, they walk right down the street with me and stay right by my side and don't leave it. So, this is the collar I always start out with when they're young. And you can take links out of here too. It's, it's easy to take out links if your dog is smaller and it'll make it smaller. So, that's nice about it. I'll use this for maybe a month or two. And then, once they've got it down pat, which is pretty quick, I'll switch to the choker. A regular choker chain. The thin ones, I mean, if you have a small dog, the thin ones are okay, but I like to use the thicker ones. They seem to work better, at least for me. And the concept behind a choker collar, well, there is a proper way to put it on also, which I'll demonstrate when I put it on the dogs here. But the concept behind the choker is when you pull it, when you pull the leash, sorry, you pull the leash, it gets tighter and compresses around their neck and once again it's just a, a, a small short tug and you give that tug and then you let go and the way the choker set up is when you let go it loosens up immediately and and it's not going to <laughs> but when it's on the dog you'll see it but when you let go it immediately loosens up so you're not choking them you don't ever want to be choking your dog and then the last thing I use, and this is very important also, is a thick leash. A lot of people use very thin leashes. You don't have control when you're using a thin leash. This is a good thick leash. You get a good grip on it. And it's actually, this leash is actually longer than I like to use because I end up um, kind of wrapping it a little bit because your dog should be right next to you. I give them about this much leeway so all of this is bunched up that's useless leash there but uh, since they're right next to you right at your side you know you only need this much leash and they stay right next to you but get a thick leash so you have a good grip on it now if you have a small dog a thinner leash is okay you don't need the real thick heavy duty leash but you still want something that you're going to 
be able to get a good grip on and have control. I like these thick ones. They're, they've got a texture to them, so you get a good grip and the leash doesn't slip. Like this one, is, it's very smooth and it slips through your hands. So when you're trying to pull back on your dog and give them a little tug to stay with you, it slips. So get one that's, um, let's see if I can show it better. It's textured, okay? All right, now I'm gonna show how these collars work. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to put first the this collar on, which is the more aggressive one. It just slips over their neck very easily. You've got the part that sticks up. Tyson, you better leave. And then your leash hooks right to the top of it. I like to keep my collars close to the top of their by, right behind their ears because you have a lot more control when it's there. It's not tight right now, but it's there. And I'm going to take him outside and show you guys how I walk him here in just a second. Um, but you want to always check. I always check my collars and make sure that they're up high because as you walk, they do slide down. This, this collar is actually a little bit too big for Buster, but he doesn't need it. But this is just for demonstration purposes. All right, so that's that collar. Good boy, Bussy. Thank you. Let's get it off Tyson. Let me take it off. That. Okay, guys. I'm going to demonstrate on how to put the choker collar on correctly. There's a right way and there's a wrong way to do it. Um, what I do before I put it on is I check on my wrist. I'll put it on my wrist and if you can see that, I'm pulling and letting go and it's not loosening up. So it's, that means it's backwards because I walk Tyson on my left side. So this would be an example of, as if he was on my left side. So it's on wrong. So what I'll do is I'll just take it off my wrist, turn it around, put it back on, tighten it up, and you can see what happens. Hopefully you can see that. When I tighten it and let go, it loosens. And that's how it should be. Okay, I'm gonna put it on Tyson. Come here. All right, so I've got it the right way. Take it off my wrist, just set it on him. It's on in the right way. And then the leash. What I'm going to do is keep it right here at the top right behind, sorry, right behind his ears, and it's ready to go. So, we're off. That's it. Good boy. Okay, I've got the prong collar on Buster. You can see I have it up close to the top of the back of his ears here. And uh, I'm just going to demonstrate walking a little bit with him. Come on, Buster. Back here. Come on. Okay. Just the slightest pull and he listens. You see I hold the handle in this hand and I hold the collar just above his neck like this when we're walking. But we walk if I stop, I just give a tiny pull and he stops immediately. See how he stops and we'll turn around. And they stay right with you. Stop. And takes just barely any pull at all. You have so much control. I'm not pulling on it until we stop. If he doesn't stop already, I just give a little tug and he stops. My face is not in there, is it? Just a little pull though. And they stop immediately and it works with any dog, any dog at all. You might have to pull just a little harder with a dog that's just learning and you may have to do it over and over. With a dog that's just learning, 
they're going to want to keep pulling and keep pulling. But every time they do, you just give a slight jerk and bring them right back next to you. I'm going to show you here. This is where they should be when you're walking. Right at your legs. That way they can see your knees and they stay right by you. If you turn, they know that you're turning because they see your knees. And they're right next to you the whole time. Good boy. All right, I will demonstrate the choker collar with Tyson next. And he, he will do really well. Tyson, Buster did a good job. Thank you, Buster. That's it. Okay, now I've got the choker, the regular choker on here with Tyson. And I'm gonna show you how it works. I've got it right behind his ears, just like I did with Buster with the prong collar. And we're gonna walk. I give a little tug and he stops immediately. If you notice, his head is always turning back towards me because he's watching my legs to see what I'm going to do. Thank you. <laughs> Alright guys, that is it. I can't tell if I'm in the... There we are. That's it for that. Um, if you have any questions, please message me and I'll try to help you out. I can't really think of anything else to tell you about it, but uh, if you do get either one of these collars, let me know and, and I'll help you out so you can walk your dogs again. Or walk your dogs for the first time ever. All right. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate how I walk them. Got their leashes ready. How I walk both of them together, actually. So we're gonna just take a little walk. That was it guys. You can see how they stay right next to me. They're so good. We practice every single day. So um, if you practice every day, just a little walk, half an hour at a time, your dogs will get it too. So good job guys. Okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit about training puppies. Um, First of all, when I train a puppy, I use a crate. And some people think that it's mean to keep a dog in a crate, but Tyson still loves his crate. He doesn't stay in it anymore, but if I need to bring it bring it out and, and set it up, he'll go right in it because he just loves it. And I can leave the door open and he just lays in it. But uh, at first, a puppy might not like it, but it becomes kind of a safe, a safe haven for them, and they, they like it. They end up liking it, and it's very good training. It's the best training, in my opinion, for potty training. Um, so what I do is, and the dog should stay in the crate all night. The first couple nights they might bark and whine and cry, but they will get used to it. So what I'll do is, in the morning, 
first thing, get their leash, put it on them, walk them straight outside. Very first thing you do before you do anything is walk them, take them right outside. Um, backing up a little bit, I forgot something. The crate should be a little bit bigger than the dog so that they can turn around, they can stand up and turn around in it. But the crate should not be so large that they have room to go to one end and go to the bathroom and come to the other end and lay down. The crate should be just a little bit bigger than they are and that's it. Um, what I did was I got a large crate because I knew Tyson was going to be large and I put a partition inside when he was little. So you can do that too. That way you don't have to be, uh, keep buying crates as they grow bigger. So what I do is I take them out first thing in the morning before I do anything and I stay with them. And they usually in the morning they'll go right to the bathroom. If they go to the bathroom, bring them in and they can run around the house for 30 minutes. If they don't go to the bathroom, they go right back into their crate. And then in 30 minutes, you take them back out again. It should be a 30 minute cycle all day long. Unless you're not home. If you're not home, they should just be in the crate. But if you're home, it should be every 30 minutes because puppies have to go to the bathroom a lot. And that continuous repeating of taking them out will teach them. It's like conditioning to show them that they go to the bathroom outside, not in the house. And they will learn fast. Tyson learned in less than a week. He was potty trained. And all my dogs have. If you keep that schedule up, it's very um, difficult. Like, it, it takes, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but if you do it, your dog will be potty trained. So, um, then when they, like I said, when they go outside, when you take them out and you keep them on a leash because you want them to be right with you when they go to the bathroom so that you see them. Don't just let them out the door and not watch them. You want to be watching them and see that they go to the bathroom. Uh, once they go to the bathroom, bring them in. They can run around for a half an hour, but right there on that 30 minutes, take them back out again. If they don't go to the bathroom that time, put them back in the crate. And they stay in the crate for 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, take them out again. They'll probably go to the bathroom that time. Then you can let them run around for another 30 minutes. So it's just a cycle that repeats all day long. But it's the fastest way to potty train. I don't believe in using puppy pads. I don't believe in teaching dogs to go to the bathroom inside of the house. It's just something I don't do and I don't recommend for anybody to do. Um, it's, it, it's a little bit more work to take them out every 30 minutes, but that's the very best way if you want to have a dog that's potty trained fast. So, um, just to repeat, keep them in a cage in their crate overnight. First thing in the morning, take them out. If they go to the bathroom, let them run around the house for a half an hour. If they don't go to the bathroom, keep them in their crate for a half an hour. Every half hour, take them out. So, um, that's pretty much it. And, uh, I don't really give my dogs treats. Dogs can get overweight very quickly, but I give them a lot of praise when they go to the bathroom when they're puppies. I give them a lot of praise and tell them good job and uh, as soon as they go to the bathroom. So that's a good thing to do. So I hope some of this helped. And if you have any questions, please contact me. I can help you out. So many people have been asking me uh, about dog training and what they can do. So I'm glad to help if I can. Hi Mikey. Hi baby. You're tired today. Oh. He's doing so good. I've had a lot of people I heard stop over today and meet him and feed him some carrots. His favorite.